So my name's Mirtos Sevidis. I'm going to start with a bit of an introduction. I'm a senior trader at Futex. I trade predominantly fixed income markets, equity indices, commodities, uh, FX. I trade a bit of everything, really. Uh, but mostly German government bonds. Um, and I'm also the chief communication officer at Futex Live. It's a new little platform we're starting up, and I'll, I'll tell you a little bit more of that in, in a second. A bit of a background on, on myself. Uh, I'm probably, you probably won't like to see the UCL and LSE logos there. You're like, whoa, 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 dude. Uh, but yeah, I, I did mechanical engineering with business finance at UCL and LSE, uh, but I only did that about two years ago. So I really know where you guys are coming from. I know what makes you tick. I, I know what, what you're feeling at the minute. You're a bit uncertain about what's going on how you're gonna, what you're gonna be doing after your studies, uh, if it's going to work or whatnot. And I just wanna tell you, you really have to kind of en embrace that uncertainty. That uncertainty is gonna be there. If you're gonna make it in whatever you're doing, you have to embrace risk. I trade risk on a daily basis. That's my job. All I do is just trade risk. The market is a sea of uncertainty. And that's what I do on a daily basis. Good. So, what I was getting to basically is, I know what it's like, and it's it's very uncertain at this at this stage. What you want to be doing is focusing on what it is you want to become, and putting all your energy into that, everything you have. So let me just start off because some of you guys probably even know what Futex is. So just to start off, Futex Global is a proprietary trading firm. We're strictly buy side, so we're not like investment banks. We don't market make, we take risk, and we try and make profit from those positions. We're mostly discretionary, so we don't do a lot of algorithmic trading or automated trading. We do most of our stuff on a discretionary basis. And our, our roots really started on the London International Financial Futures Exchange. So what, what is life, the life floors? You see that, 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 that funny looking guy right there? Uh, back in the day, people used to trade on these pits, right? There used to be loads of people in these pits and they just, they'd be sh pushing and shoving each other trying to get orders. You know, buy me a thousand, buy me a thousand, sell me a thousand. They'd push the guy, be like, no, I want the order. It, it was a lot of like neck to neck, elbow to elbow kind of action. That kind of died down. Now, with the advent of electronic trading, everyone's trading on floors like ours. So what we do now is predominantly, we have like six, seven, eight screens and we just trade on that desk the whole day. Um, and I'm here to kind of show you kind of the stuff that we do. But I don't want to show you um, or, or talk to you guys about, you know, little clues or what you can do to, you know, get an internship or get a job. I want to actually show you what we use to make money on a daily basis. Because you guys are university right now. You're learning a lot of theory. Just a lot of theory. You're learning all about just concepts and trying to, how you're going to apply that. But from the markets, we've actually seen that theory and practice are so different. Take the financial crisis, crisis, for example. Everyone thought things were good. The status quo was okay until everything collapsed. But that was because practice was different to what theory was projecting. So I want to show you a little bit about what we use and the tools we use to actually make profit on a daily basis. So, what's Futex Live? Futex Live is a new platform we're actually launching. It's a fully interactive online trader knowledge portal. And it's developed by traders for traders. And I'm not gonna go through into too much depth about this. You guys can go on the website and check it out. But basically we've got a lot of um, uh, live streaming from our trading floors so you guys can get insights on what we're looking at. We charge a subscription for most people, but what we're doing, and hopefully with Gabriel, we're gonna start a partnership and you guys can access that for free. So you guys can take a look at what we do, how we, how we do things, what we trade, and how we, how we prepare for certain events. Now, What's the mission of Futex Live? I don't know if you guys can see that. It's a little bit dark, I suppose. But our mission is to reach individuals that are passionate about the financial markets and empower them with the knowledge, the skills, and the financial funding so they can pursue that career in trading. And hopefully that, that pursuit is lucrative. Um, to fun fact, I mean, nine out of 10 of our elite traders were trained and backed by Futex. Now, when I say elite trader, what do I mean by elite trader? You're thinking of elite trader. Who's this, who's this big, big boss? Uh, well, these guys, they move a lot of money around. Big, big positions. We're talking um, guys that within a day can make an investment banking salary 
in one day. Obviously, they have experience. They're there for six, seven, eight years, and they've actually honed those skills to be able to do that. Let me, tell you, let me give you an example. Uh, this guy called Nav, he passed by the firm, um, and he was there for, I don't know, maybe five, six years. He's a legend in our firm, we'd say. Um, and during the financial crisis, this guy, um, for the lack of a better word, had balls. He just used to get into big positions and he saw the risk, he saw the reward, and he took on the trades. And there was this one, there was this one day where the market was just collapsing, just, just literally, it, 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 there was no end to it, just kept going lower and lower and lower. And he just stood, stood in the way, put his bids in, bought, some, bought, bought up the market, a few thousand lots, whatever it was, and went home, went to sleep, came back the next day. The risk manager calls him up and, you know, he calls him up and tells him, like, you know, Nav, what's going on? This position, it's, you know, you want to get out of it? He's like, well, what's, what's the status on it? Well, you're up $13 million. And he's like, okay, just get me out. Now, a normal person would be like jumping for joy, you know, going ecstatic, but that's part of his job. He just came in to do that. That's, that's what he did, and he left. He, his goal was just to take on the trade that made sense, not because he wanted the money, not because of greed. Now, you guys are probably thinking, well, wow, that's an incredible amount of money. The guys are probably thinking, yeah, models and bottles, that's what I'll be doing with that. Girls, maybe lipstick and bags. But really, what it comes down to, um, the industry, and I don't want to be one of those guys, the industry has got it all wrong because usually they show you the tip of the iceberg. And the tip of the iceberg is um, we just make loads of money and it's just incredibly lucrative. The odds are firmly against you in this job. I'm just going to put it very, very plain and simple so you guys know that. 95% of traders fail. That's a huge stat. Some of you might have known that, but some of you might have not, and they're thinking, wow, I don't want to touch this. But it's like any performance pursuit. You play golf, if you play, if you're, you want to be in the Premier League, if you want to do anything, a performance pursuit, only really the 5% make it. But that's because they have the discipline, they have the routine. They work on a daily basis to work towards that goal. So I want to show you a few things today. So what I'm going to be doing today is I want to get you guys, I mean, I can't teach you trading. I can't make you guys a trader tomorrow, but I can take you one step closer to being unconsciously competent. Just one step. If I, if I accomplish that today, inspire just one of you guys, I'm happy. So what, what, what are the four stages of learning a new skill? I'll just outline that for you guys before I actually get into a little bit of the nitty gritty. So when you first start off, you're unconsciously incompetent. What does that mean? You don't know what you don't know. You don't, you're not aware of your deficit. You start, if you want to start riding a bike or swimming or whatever, playing chess, you actually don't know what you need to learn. And then you actually do a bit of research and you find out, okay, you open your books, you say, okay, there's this, there's that. If it's trading, there's bonds, there's equities, there's currencies, there's futures, there's options. There's just so much to learn. But you don't know until you actually Make, take that first step. Eventually, once you start doing a bit of practice and you get into it, you become consciously competent. What does consciously competent mean? That's where you're good at it, but you need all your focus. You need all your concentration to do it. Think of a kid. He, you know, he, he, he learns how to tie his shoelace, right? You go to speak to that kid. He goes, no, 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 no. I'm tying my shoelace. Just give me a second. I bet you if I walked up to any one of you guys right now, and spoke to you, and you were tying your shoelace, you could do it without blinking an eye. That is unconscious competence. And you can reach that doing anything. The only way you get from here to here is hours and hours and hours of practice with anything you do. No different with trading. Absolutely no different. The only way you can become an expert, what they say an expert is, is 10,000 hours. So if you're prepared to do 10,000 hours, then, well, then you can make it. But you have to be prepared to do that. Put the hours, the discipline, the routine. So let's cover a few of the trading elements, a few of the things that we look at at our trading firm, what we, what we actually trade off of. And I'm excited to show you some of this stuff because I remember when I was at university, I used to run my own society as well, the Quant, the Quant Society at UCL and 
And you know, we used to do these talks all the time. Everyone used to come in, they used to tell us, oh, where the industry's moving in five, 10 years and all that just crap, basically. I'd rather show you some substance, some stuff that we actually look at. So the first thing, fundamental analysis. For those of you that are kind of into trading, you probably already heard of fundamental analysis, but how do we use fundamental analysis? You could use fundamental analysis so many different ways. You know, maybe if you're doing economics, you could use regression models. You can use, I don't know what, there's so many things, but we don't use that kind of stuff. We actually look at event-driven risks. So predominantly central bank monetary policy. Central banks like the European Central Bank, the Federal Reserve, the Bank of Japan, these drive flow. They drive liquidity. They move the markets around that way. So when things need to change, if, if something needs to be repriced, we're there to take it there. I'm there to reprice the market. If I see something needs to be repriced, I get in. I, I take part. The same things with macro data points like employment, inflation, retail sales. They're very big. Inflation is a very big theme right now. If you guys are reading anything in Bloomberg or, or FT, inflation is huge right now. You need to know where inflation is heading because everyone's scared of deflation. So what do we kind of look at in these monetary policy events? You can see lovely old Draghi, Yellen, and uh, Mark Carney there. Uh, for those of you who don't know, he's the um, president of the ECB, president of the uh, Federal Reserve, and the president of the Bank of England right there. You get used to their faces if you want to get into trading. <laughs> so what we kind of look at in these events is what's priced in. What is the market actually expecting? So let's say we're going into an in, like a interest rate decision. And I know just looking at the short, short term interest rates, I can tell the probabilities are of let's say of 80% that there's gonna be an interest rate cut. So what happens? What do I plan? What do I put in my plan just in case that 80% becomes zero? What if they don't cut interest rates? The market needs to shift, it needs to move. It's priced in 80%, now it's gonna go down to zero. So I'm there to take it there. So are algorithms, so are so many other traders, hedge funds, investment banks that are telling their clients what they're doing. These are, these are, this, is what mon this is what's driving flow in the market right now. That's what you need to know at the minute. And we also look at market structures. We look at what, where the highest probability and the highest risk versus reward is on those setups. And finally, we make an execution plan. It's gotta be a hol holistic execution plan. One that I've covered all the scenarios. All the scenarios so I know, just like an algorithm, if this happens, I execute like this. If this happens, I execute like that. If what I expect doesn't come out the way I expected, then I'm doing this. It's a, it's a very, very meticulous plan. That's what we do on these event-driven risks. And we do the very, very similar thing for macro, macroeconomic data points. Again, what's the market expecting? What's the highest probability uh, trade, highest risk reward? And we back test to see how the markets reacted to so those figures and then we make an execution plan. So let's look at some of the tools, the charting, tool, charting tools, and what we, what we use in technical analysis. This is a different ball game, but technical analysis is what helps us read what the market has done before. So have you guys seen a candlestick pattern before? Is there anyone that hasn't? Know what a candlestick is? If, if so, then I can just move on because this is, this is, this is trading 101, but just to go through it real quick, for those of you that are embarrassed to say, um, we start off, there's an open on each candlestick, then there's a close, that's the body, the high and the low are the wicks, right? Then you have the same thing for a candlestick that's gone down. Now, I'm not gonna go through that in too much depth, but eventually you can look at, can you see that very well? I mean, I don't think the lighting's very good, but what you can do is see market structure from how the candlestick chart is forming. So if you take a look at this chart, for example, you see the market moves up into this pattern where it's consolidated, it's coiled, it actually has energy now. There's, there's market participants fighting. They're fighting one way or another. I want this market to go up. I want this market to go down. And it keeps moving within this small range. Once it breaks out, that energy needs to be released. The market moves in rhythm and flow. It's got ebbs and flows. Once it, once it starts breaking out, there's price action pushing it. And I'm gonna show you what price action looks like, what actual order flow looks like. So, one interesting tool that we use that I'm sure 
probably 99% of you haven't seen before in your life is market profile. If you have, that's a good thing, really good thing. Market profile is a tool we use to organize data in the marketplace. We're predominantly intraday traders, so this is very, very, very useful. Now, for those of you that do study, let's say statistics, this is a simple bell-shaped curve. Simple, normal distribution. You've seen this before. You know that 68.2%, we just rounded up to 70%, takes place in this section, in the middle. Anything past that point is one standard deviation away. And then there's two, there's three standard deviations away. We usually just use the whatever between, whatever's in between the first two standard deviations. Now, what do you do if you just take that, flip it on its side, and use letters instead of that to represent it? You get what's called a market profile. What we do is we take every half an hour, so the, the, the market opens up at seven o'clock in the morning, the futures market. Every half an hour, we draw one letter. So at seven o'clock, we get the open. You see the open right there? That's the open. It comes in, we get one half hour of trade, the Y's form, then the Z's form on top of that, and then consecutively you start building the profile over the day. This just basically shows you where the market is accepting fair value, where it's accepting, where it wants to trade, where it wants to do business. You can see right in here, that green bit in the middle, that's the value area. That's where 70% of the trade took place. And we use this statistical analysis so that we can get in and out of positions. If a market's in value, then it wants to stay within value. If it's trading out of value, then it's out of balance. Maybe it wants to move away from it. It's a very simple concept. That's all we really use. Then we use the price ladder, which I'll show you in a second, to take those positions. Another thing to, to note, obviously we have the open. The first hour of trade between seven and eight o'clock is our initial balance. So we use that as some sort of benchmark for the day. And then the volume profile is where the trade has actually taken place. Then you get these cool little things like selling tails right in there. That's a selling tail, that's a tail. That's something where you see right here, no one really wanted to trade there. It traded up there and it got rejected. A seller stepped in and said, oh, no, I'm gonna sell it here. That's good value for me. Or it comes in here, a buyer steps in, that's good value for me. And it brings it back into value. Now you might be thinking, wait, hold up, hold up. The market, does not stay in a range all day. <laughs> this can't be right. Well, we use this obviously, some days the market's range. I mean, if you take statistically, the market's ranging about 80% of the time. The rest is trending. But it's quite useful if it is. But if it's not and it needs to trend, and I, I don't know if you can see this very well. Maybe we wanna shut the light if you can. Oh yeah, that's a lot more interesting, isn't it? So you can see from the previous day, right in there, that is the value area of the previous day, right? The market closed right there. Market came in the next day, opened here, and what is that called? The market's opened outside of balance. Balance is down here. I'm not showing you the rest of the day because it's actually a very big trend day. So we opened up in here. Now a very simple plan is, okay, if the market comes down, doesn't pierce within here, and starts moving higher, that means it wants to move to a new area of fair value. The market's just telling you, very simply, I don't want to trade in yesterday's value. I want to trade somewhere else now. So it, it leaves what's called a buying tail. Right there, you've got a buying tail. As soon as you start seeing things like single prints where it's not actually showing any initiative to trade, that means the market's seeking new value. You can see now we're forming these distributions higher and higher and where we leave our value area is up in here. So the market found fair value yesterday here, and we've moved and trended higher. Trends are all, all trends are, are markets seeking new value. That's all it is. It's just seeking a new area to do business. Pretty simple concept. I'm sure any one of you guys, a monkey can learn this. And I just, I just wanna make this really, really as simple, as simple as possible. I mean, obviously it gets more complex down the line, but if you can just learn these simple things, it's actually super, super powerful. Okay. So this, obviously I'm not gonna go through this in very much depth. We'll take a look at this at the end of the talk, but once you start learning these things, you can start looking at complex structures and seeing how the market's reacting to certain value areas, certain initial balances, how it's opened, how it's moved away in, in, in and out of balance. But we'll take a look at that later. 
One last thing that we look at is footprint and delta. So footprint, and I'm not gonna go through this in very much depth because I can't go through this without a day. <laughs> but all it is, it just shows you the interaction between buyers and sellers, how aggressive the buyers are versus the sellers. And if you can see at the bottom, it just shows you the buyers are obviously a lot more aggressive on the day, if you can even read that, but it's basically a whole day, the buying was more aggressive on the offer than it was on the bid. And I'll show you what I mean by that with price action. I'm not gonna go through that in very much depth. Okay, so the price ladder. This I'm excited to show you because a lot of you probably never actually seen what order flow looks like. What is order flow? What, what, what makes up the market? Now I'm gonna show you level two market depth and price action. So what is the price ladder? What is, what is this price ladder I'm talking about, right? This is what we execute on. 80% of our trades come from what we see there. Why? Because that's the raw market. Everything you see in, in charts, in uh, anything you read in articles, whatever it is, that's an extrapolation of what the market is, that this is the market. The market is made up of buyers, you see buyers on the left-hand side here, and the sellers. The price is in the middle, as you can see. Pretty simple. All the people that wanna buy are on the left side, all the people that wanna sell are on the, on the right side. Where those two people, where those two parties meet, that is the market price. Now, not all markets are this liquid, so it doesn't always like, end up at this price. Sometimes you have spreads between here and here, so there's a huge spread between where the buyer and the seller is. But in a very liquid market, the, there's basically no spread. There's a bid at 40s and an offer at 41s. So bids on the left, price column in the middle, offers on the right. This is what we look at on a daily basis. And you've got the volume profile, what's traded at each price on the right-hand side. Pretty simple. You can just take a look at, okay, for example, at 159.53s, there was 30,061 lots traded there. We know that that's how much wanted to be traded there. That's pretty simple stuff. And you can see what, what, what areas the market didn't want to do a lot of volume at. For example, 49s and 48s. You can see that, and that helps in your execution. Now you can see, obviously, that, like I said before, 40s, you've got 255 lots in the bid. 39s, 163 lots in the bid. I'm just going through this so when I show you guys a video of what it looks like, you, you're acclimating to this quickly. And then on the offer here at 59.41, so who wants to sell at 41s? 161 lots and 341 lots on the offer, 42s. And you go all the way up the page. People are stacking up where they want to sell, where they want to buy. And obviously, you see that little change in color there. That's where we note like the low of the day or the high of the day. So I'm going to take, let's take a look now what this price action looks like. And this is probably going to be very blurry just because of the projector, but um, uh, maybe the second video will be a little bit better. In this video, I'm going to show you a month-end trade. On month-ends, our traders really push their size. We really push our limits to the max because on month-end is where institutions, hedge funds, pension funds, investment banks, that's where they really put in their money. That's where they're you know, changing their books, trying to book in their profits, and that's where you see a lot of order flow. So in this trade particularly, you'll see um, that the trader is actually trying to buy aggressively as he sees the price action come in. So let's take a look real quick. You see at 44s, he saw seeing, seeing a buyer, he buys 80 lots. Now every tick is 800 euros. He sees a bit of a seller come in around, I'm seeing a bit of a seller at 46, 47. He's probably gonna offer 47s. He offers 40 at 47s, he gets filled. He's trying to get 48s, he, takes, he tries offering 48s, he doesn't get them, he offers 47s again. A seller's coming in, he's leaving his offer in so that he can try and sell this. This is in minuscule time frames. We're talking, that was you know within not even five seconds, that was 2,400 euros. He's just sold 48s now, he sees a seller step in. He's watching the price action, monitoring it, seeing how it feels. Does it, does, it look what it, does it look like what he wants to see? He starts going offside a bit here. Now the seller starts to step in a bit. Now you'll see just above at 49s and 48s, it's 900 lots, 800 lots. He goes to market at 47s. Now it's driving the market lower. This is the kind of price action we watch. The interaction between the bids and the offer, how the market's interacting with each other. 
When you see that price action, how are you reacting? How are you getting involved? And so sometimes, I mean, not all the time are we trading such big size, but when you know you can feel the edge in the price action, that's where you want to be pushing it. Sometimes you're just pulling a feeler trade. You might put in one or two lots just to feel it out, take that risk, put, them, put the chips on the table, see how I feel about it. And then eventually you, you push your size a bit. The next is going to be a little bit more of an advanced one. This is over the Bank of England quarterly inflation report. To trade in this manner, you have to, like I said before, have a very, very meticulous plan of how you're going to attack it. Why? Because the market, as you're going to see in a second, and it's in this middle column right here, you're going to be watching, that's the pound, a market that you probably know. That's the, the pound against the dollar, the cable, as we, as we call it. What's going, to what's going to come out is that the, the Bank of England is going to be a little bit more hawkish than, than usual. So that means their view is that they might hike interest rates sooner than we thought, and the pound's going to rally, and it's going to rally fast. You're going to watch how this trader executes. So the announcement is about to come out. You can see his mouse right there. And now the announcement is about to come out. The market's very, very thin. You don't see much. It's just come out. Now he's trying to hit at market. Hits at market. You see his price right there. The market's moving higher and higher. There's a big, there's a big orders coming in now. So he's trying to buy more and more at market because he knows his probability is that this market's going to move higher and higher. Now his price is not even on the page. He can't even see his price. It's just moving higher and higher. And this is just going to be trending higher just because, like I said before, if you know your expectations and you know what the market's pricing, and all of a sudden something different comes out, you can hit that and just ride the wave. So that was a, a few of the things that we we're talking about on price action. Really exciting stuff. I know when I first saw the, my price ladder, can we get the lights on, please? Thank you very much. Thank you. I didn't put you guys to sleep with that, with the lights off, but um, that's really exciting. When I first saw my first price ladder, I was literally, and I, I just because I love trading, and when I first saw it, it's, it's, it put me into a state of trance because I, I thought, well, wow, like that's what the market's made out of. That is the, that's the raw market. Everything else is just hearsay. It doesn't really matter. That's what makes up the market. I'm going to talk about something a little bit more boring, but without this, there's no way you can be a trader. <laughs> Absolutely no way. Risk and money management is what's going to keep you in the game. How do I manage my chips? Because it's essentially, I mean, there's a lot of parallels between trading and poker, if you want to put it that way. But it, in essence, how I'm managing my, my, my chips? What's my expected return? What's my money management? Now, when you look at any sort of trade setup or any sort of trade idea, that has, you have to know what your probability of success is. What's the probability that this trade is going to make me money in the long run? Have I back tested it? Have I looked at it over and over again and, and saw, okay, I know there's a 50-50 chance I'll make money on this or a 60-40 chance I'll make money on this. What's my risk versus my reward? What am I risking to make this much? Now, I'll tell you something interesting. If I gave you a coin and said, okay, you'll win... 40% of the time if you flick this, this coin. 40% of the time, if you flick it, you'll win. But when you win, you'll win twice as much as you lose. In the long run, that strategy is going to make you money. Because some people think, oh, if the, if the strategy is making money 51% of the time, I'm going to make money in the long run. But even a, even a strategy with 40% win rate Risking 5% of your equity to make 10% will make you money in the long run. That's what some people don't understand. There's two types of traders, really, at our firm. We've got traders that do very high-risk reward trades with low probability. And then there's traders that do extremely high probability trades with quite crappy risk reward. But they know over a long period of time, it's going to be making them money because the probabilities are in their favor. That's really what you look at when, when you're, you're managing your risk. So from a money management perspective, I'm not going to go through this in, in a great depth, but it's so, so, so important in any trader's arsenal to know how you're going to manage your money throughout the, the day, throughout the week, throughout the month. Retail traders, the, the biggest difference between a retail trader 
and a professional trader is that retail traders always think of capital appreciation. How much money am I going to make on this? How much money am I going to make out of this trade? I, you know, if I put this trade on, I, I can make 10 grand. That's great. But again, the professional trader is thinking capital preservation. I just made 5K. I'm going to hold back a bit. You know, I don't think I'm going to put all my chips onto this. I'm going to actually manage my money throughout the week such that I know the events. If there's two big events in the week, the other three days, I'll scale back. I'll, I'll, I'll keep my money at bay. That's what's important in moving forward in this career. You have to have your money management. So another very, very key aspect before I actually go on to a trade setup and I go back to that complex structure that I showed you before is lifestyle management. Why do so many people fail at this job? Because they don't have it up here. They don't, they don't, they don't actually consider that you have to keep yourself healthy. You have to have a routine. You have to have, your psychology has to be up here all the time. Emotional capital is just as important as financial capital. Yes, that's a word, emotional capital. In case you didn't, in case you weren't aware of that, we, we actually look at, okay, I feel like, I might say to myself, you know, at this stage in time, I'm not feeling too confident, so maybe I, not, I might not push it this week too much. Or whatever the case may be, the, the main point is your psychology feeds into every decision you make and your decisions need to be planned and calculated. I know when you, you look up, I remember when I said, I mean, it was only a, a short while ago, but when I used to look up, what, what does it take to become a trader? What does it take? What do I need to know? Just Google it. Just Google it. And it'll say, and you'll find things like, you need to be emotionless. You can't have emotion when you trade. That's bullshit. People have emotions. It's part of our human fabric. Everyone has emotions. You just have to learn how to control them. Some people control them better than others. But at the end of the day, humans are not emotionless. All you can control are your attitudes and your beliefs. That's it. If you can control that and you can believe that moving forward, you can actually make a career out of this. A great man once said, you can't connect the dots looking forward. You can only connect them looking backward. You have to trust that the, the dots will connect sometime down the road. That's what's going to make all the difference. Does anyone know who that man is? Correct. Steve Jobs. It's important that you have faith. There's two roads. There's, road, there's one road down where you're, you're fearful. You can walk down the path of fear or walk down the path of faith. You always have to be in the path of faith. Like I said before, there's a lot of uncertainty in this job. You have to make sure you handle your psychology accordingly. Now, real quick, I'm going to go through, obviously, I've gone through event-driven risk strategies, a bit of technical trading. I've shown you some price action. And, I mean, I'm not going to go through all the automated algorithmic trading, but there's various ones. And just some of them to note, you can look at them up in your own time. There's trend following systems. So, watching how a market's trending and tr trying to position yourself with that. Mean reversion, so mean reversion is more like when you're looking for a market to come back to the mean of that distribution that you saw before, something like that. There's arbitrage opportunities. Now, the meaning of arbitrage, is, uh, the meaning of arbitrage is really basically taking a trade that has zero risk. But that's only deterministic arbitrage. Relative arbitrage is when it's basically mean reversion. But some people like to term it as, as mean reversion system. I don't know if you guys ever heard of long-term capital management? Yeah, yeah. They got destroyed. You know what they were doing? They were doing uh, relative arbitrage. They called it relative arbitrage. Everyone thought they were gods. You know, all these guys are gods. They're just making so much money. Just take my money and trade with it. But they didn't realize that it, it, there's no free lunch. You have, to, you have to understand your risk parameters. So let's look on to a technical setup. I showed you this thing before. This is an inside day setup. Something that I, I will look at, a lot of the traders in our firm look at. Can we shut the lights off real quick? Sorry, I'm asking you again. Awesome. So, coming into this market, backdrop. 
Market's moving higher. Value is moving higher and higher and higher. It's trending. We get to a stage where we get a bit of exuberance, an, ex an exhaustion in the market. Right in here, you've just seen a selling tail. A seller stepped in and said, I'm going to sell those. The market caps out, leaves one inside day. So this day is within the range of the previous day. Then you get a day after that. This is the, this is the initial market profile that you saw. That is within the previous two-day range. That's an inside day. Why is that so cool? Because we know right in here, there's a lot of energy. There's, there's a fight between buyers and sellers. They're positioned right in here. So the guys that have just bought right in here are expecting this market not to look like this. <laughs> They're expecting the market to look like that the next day. So since there's so much energy and coiling in that market, the next day, we see a bit of an opportunity. Where do we see the opportunity? Right in here, there's our value area for the day, the previous day. The market opens up right there. You see the open? We try and test higher. We test the initial balance of the day before. Because we can't hold a bid, we can't hold a bid above the previous day's value area, we start to trade and rotate. This is auction theory. We start to trade and rotate towards the other side of value, the bottom side. Once we take out that level, you see the market re market's reaction is quick and swift. Look at the volume done here. Nothing. People are just scrambling out for the exit. Everyone's trying to sell, sell, sell. If you see that price action on the ladder, and unfortunately I don't have that on a ladder for you, but I'll probably send you a video or something and you guys can pass it around. The ladder, you can see those sellers coming in physically with lots of size. And if you can see that, you've got the edge of the setup. This is, this, I mean, this is not just technical trading, the stuff that you see retail traders do. I'm, I can see the price action. It's confirming to me that someone's selling. So I sell in front of him. Oh, you want to sell? I'll sell in front of you. Cool. I'll take it a couple of ticks lower. That is a profitable strategy. You have a plan. You have your parameters, your risk reward, and you execute. What does that look like on a candlestick structure? That's what it looks like on a candlestick structure. So you guys can just realize what you just saw. Market comes up into this area, consolidates, starts building energy. It's, it's just converging. The market's literally converging into a point where it has to get out. It has to explode out of that area. And eventually we get that move with volume. See here, right here, the volume is just increasing as we move to the downside. You want to see volume in the direction of where you're trading. These are the, some, some of the little things that we look at. Very cool, cool thing that we look at. Now, I just want to close this up by saying, and I've covered a, a, a few of these things. Can we get the lights on real quick just so we can close this up? Whoa. So, um, just to close this up, you, if you want to get into this career, you have to have commitment. And these are a few of the trading commitments that I believe, I mean, I've just put them down because I've seen them. I've had to face every single one of them. During my journey so far, I've realized a lot of things about myself. It brought a lot of my, person, my personal characteristics out. And I realized what I really need to hone in on. What you need is courage. I mean, you, need, you need these things basically in everything, but I think these particularly apply. Courage, why do you need courage? You need courage to face the fear. The fear of failure. Everyone has that fear. Everyone has that fear for everything. You don't want to fail. No one wants to fail at doing anything. You have to have the courage to overcome that fear. You have to have the focus to sit at your desk, watch the market intently, not even blink your eye for two, three hours straight so that you can see where your next edge is. You can see where your next opportunity is and attack like a predator. Patience. You have to have patience to let the market come to you. You don't want to be chasing the market. You don't want to be pushing, trying to get to where the market isn't going. You have to have the market come to you. Let the market come to you and then you take the position. You have to have confidence and this plays hugely with the lifestyle management. If you manage your lifestyle, you'll always have the confidence to come in and, and execute your plan. You have to have resilience. Resilience is so super key. I mean, imagine you're down on the day. You come in and this is, I mean, this is money basically out of your pocket. 
you're down on a day two, three grand. And you're saying, how am I going to pay my rent? You have to have the res resilience to get back in and fight. That's like a runner doing a 100 meter sprint. He falls down, he gets back up and does it again and does it again. That's the difference between a winner and a loser. And to wrap it up, you need, you need, need, need discipline. That's the only way you're going to mend all of these things together. If you have the discipline to go out there and pursue what you want, and this does not only apply to trading, I guarantee you most of you won't even touch trading in your life. But with anything, if there's something I can show you and teach you for a couple of years out of university, you have to have the discipline, routine, keep it in place. All right, thank you very much, guys. Um, we'll have Gabrielle come up and just tell you uh, a bit about the partnership.